Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Tony Carroll. I'm an extension specialist in the State 4-H office, at, and, and I uh, want to thank everyone for being here and being in attendance for our cake decorating workshop this evening. I also um, want to remind everybody of a few housekeeping rules as we go forward, and um, right now we have 266 participants uh, per participating in this workshop. Um, we have a capacity of 300, and knowing that we had um, some really, really strong participation on our Facebook and social media. In fact, if this um, uh, post was shared 982 times and was has been seen by 87,129 people. And so uh, in anticipation of uh, further, um, you know, filling up our uh, Zoom room, uh, we are also live streaming this on Facebook Live at this point. And so as we go through this evening, I've also uh, in order to, to be courteous to everyone and make sure that uh, Stacy can do the workshop for us. I have also uh, muted everyone's microphone. And so you, if you have questions, be sure to send those to me through the chat box and I will relay those to Stacy at the end of the um, session. Also, if you're on Facebook, watching uh, live on Facebook, be sure to type your questions into the comment box and we will be glad to uh, answer your questions uh, because they'll be forwarded to me as well. I do wanna say that um, you know the purpose of tonight's workshop is to be able to teach you some skills uh, on, that, are, that are common within the skills that we want to 4-Hers to learn. And so we're not gonna be talking about 4-H exhibit requirements tonight. If you have specific re um, questions regarding 4-H exhibit requirements, you can email those to me at tcarrell -L at purdue.edu and I'll put that information in the chat box. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you have questions uh, regarding Stacy's presentation, the tips that she's using, et cetera, feel free to send those through uh, the, the chat box and I will relay those to her um, this evening uh, so that we can get those answered. And so um, the other housekeeping item is that if you have not signed the attendance register, there is the link that's, uh, that was posted on our uh, sheet to begin with, but then also if you look in the chat box, you will see the link to our uh, attendance roster, which is https colon slash slash and then bit.ly slash in4h workshop. Again, that is uh, in the chat box. So if you'll go there and sign in for the attendance register, uh, that would be great. And so um, the other thing that I would ask is that uh, since there's um, low bandwidth within some of the areas of Indiana and um, we are almost to capacity on our room now. Uh, I would ask that, uh, you know, to be courteous to everyone, if you uh, do not need your uh, video, I would suggest turning that off so that it'll save bandwidth uh, on your end as well as uh, eliminate um, bandwidth issues for other people throughout uh, Indiana. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Stacy Parnell who is uh, uh, going to do our workshop. And Stacy has over 30 years of experience in the cake decorating field. She was a 10 year 4-H member in Boone County, completing cake decorating all 10 years and receiving top honors. She has served as a county and state cake decorating judge for 15 years, as well as a project leader and enjoys getting to work uh, with youth as they develop their own cake decorating skills. Outside of 4-H, Stacy works as Western Governors University as a uh, program faculty manager and owns SC Suites, a home-based baking business specializing in custom celebration cakes. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Stacy. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. And um, thank you all. I was so excited to come and share skills with each and every one of you. And yeah, like Tony mentioned, that's one of my favorite things to do is share cake decorating. So this is a great night. I'm excited to see all of you here. And um, just a couple things, just wanted to start out with some super basics. And as Tony said, we're not going to go over the requirements for cake decorating for Indiana 4-H, but I will try to explain what type of skill I'm showing that does align with the different levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Um, with that, we're gonna start with some super basics. So for one, I've got some icing here. Try to show it in the bowl. This is royal icing, which we do recommend for county and state 4-H cakes. And the easiest way to tell whether or not your icing is ready, grab a spatula, clean it off on the edge. Okay, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna jab it straight in, pull it right up, and you can see it's kind of got peaks. So if it stays up, your icing is ready to go, okay? If it's too hard to get in there, then your icing is too hard, 
add a little teeny tiny bit of water, like splash it with your fingers, a little bit of water. If it's not standing up for you, keep mixing it, okay? Um, next up, because I know we do have a little bit of everyone here, we're gonna start with the basics and work our way up. So I'm gonna start with a disposable bag, okay? We're going to put this together. It's gonna work. The next thing I'm gonna do, I have a coupler. You guys can see that? And it has two parts. So the base and then the ring just screws right off. So you have the two pieces. I'm gonna take this one, put it on my finger, into the bag. I'm gonna push kind of hard. And then it won't, this isn't gonna be really visible, but you can kind of tell there's a ring that gets left, an imprint indentation. I'm then going to take my scissors and cut between the indentation and the tip. So just a little up from that. The indentation's right here. Cut the top off. Okay. And then slide the coupler back up to the edge. I'm gonna add the tip. We're gonna to start tonight with a 16. I'll run right over here in a second. So just set that on top, add the ring on top, screw that on tight. You don't need to go crazy with it. I know we've all got muscles, but just tight, finger tight. Okay. So we've got our bag, it's ready to go. A couple ways you can do this. You can put it in a cup if you want to. You can get mom, dad, big sister, big brother to help and just kind of put your hands underneath the lip of the bag. So you can put the icing in there. Okay. And then just grab a dollop, get that in there, kind of shake it down. And you don't need to overfill your bag. If it gets too full, you're gonna have trouble squeezing it and working with it. So I just do about that much to start a bag. I'm gonna pull this all up, shake it down a little bit, and I'm gonna take my fingers, pinch it, and squeeze down. And Stacy, down to the Stacy, while you're doing that, um, uh -huh. someone is asking if you would recommend a metal or plastic coupler. You know, I've always only used plastic. I haven't used a metal coupler, um, so I really I have no idea how that works, other than it being a coupler. Um, but yeah, I've just always used the plastic ones. That's a good question. All right, so once you get that all down there, then I'm gonna take my hand like this, pinch it between the back, grab it, get it all together, and then squeeze and twist, or not squeeze, but twist. So my bag is now tied off, okay? And most of the night, my bag is gonna be right in that crux between my thumb and my first finger, okay? Everybody see that? All right, so with that, I'm gonna move the camera so we can get better shots of the decorating that we're gonna have going on. So if you're motion sick, look away. <laughs> I had to warn people about the other day. Okay. Second. Okay, let's go down a little bit. Okay, all right. So first thing we're gonna do Again, I've got my bag, I've got it twisted off here. Get that up a little bit, there we go. First thing we're gonna do is a star. So with the star, it's a drop technique. You're gonna go straight up and down, so 90 degree angle. And you don't necessarily wanna be on the table, you wanna be a little bit off your table or your cake. And tonight I'm doing a lot of practicing on wax paper, okay? Honestly, do this year round. You can practice on wax paper, you can practice on other cakes. Practice is gonna get build all of your skills, okay? But tonight I'm gonna use wax paper. So we're just going to press, try not to you know, squeeze a little bit, count maybe one, two, three, four, stop and pull up. Okay, you want me to get you a little bit closer. Um, right there. <laughs> so I'm just gonna squeeze, stop, pull up. Okay, do one more, squeeze, stop, pull up. Okay, and you'll see there, sometimes you're gonna get these little peaks. You really don't want the peak. Usually that means you've kept squeezing, but if you get a teeny tiny one, that's okay. If you get a big one, you can sometimes come back and just dab that back down, okay? Um, the next thing I'm gonna show is, I'm just gonna hold the camera tonight. One of the things you can do with a star is do some sort of a star-filled pattern. So I'm gonna slide underneath our wax paper here, a couple designs. So I've got both the 4-H Clover and Mickey Mouse, because who doesn't love Mickey Mouse? Um, and what you can do is basically create this design. So if you were doing this on a cake, I would, let's just say, cut out the idea of Mickey Mouse, the template. You could draw that on your cake with a template or a toothpick, kind of go around lightly on the edges so you know where you're going. And then to do your star-filled pattern, sorry, twisting this back up. 
you're just going to go around and do a bunch of stars. Nope, go up a little bit. And you're just gonna go really right next to each other. Okay. And then you can kind of see where I've got all of these stars together. You can't see anything in between them. Can't see anything underneath. And you wanna make sure they're about the same size. I kind of messed up because that one's kind of a big, that one's kind of small. You wanna to try to make sure they're about the same size. You're gonna do that all the way around so you fill up this pattern. Okay, and then you're creating something. So once you're done, you'll essentially have Mickey Mouse. Okay. Um, and all of this, by the way, is with a size 16 tip. Okay. With a star tip, which is what this is, you can see the edge of it kind of looks like a star. This one, a 16, is one of the smaller star tips. You can also use an 18, a 21. Um, and actually, I'm going to switch out to a little bit bigger tip here and put the camera down. And with I'm doing that, all I'm doing, I'm doing is unscrewing the ring. Okay, so I just unscrew that ring right there. Tip falls off. I'm gonna grab another tip, and this one happens to be a 21, which is a much bigger star tip. And it really just depends on you what kind or what size of tips you want to use, depending on what you're doing. If I'm doing a border, I'm probably gonna use a larger star tip, whether it be a star border or the shell, which I'm getting ready to show you. I'm doing a design like Mickey, I'm gonna use a smaller star tip, okay? And so with a shell, what you're gonna do, make sure I got the camera going, um, start here, you're gonna go up, down, stop, pull away. So you have a little shell. So up, down, stop, pull away. And the why I'm saying up, down, stop, in my head, that's keeping my, hang on, I don't have the camera right. Yeah, Tony, holler if I get off mark with the camera, please. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go up, down, stop, pull away. So you can keep the same size. You wanna make sure your techniques are all roughly the same size, okay? You don't want a teeny tiny shell followed by a giant shell. So all you're gonna do, I'm gonna do it again. You're just up, down, stop. And with that, you've got a shell, okay? All right. Um, one other thing I'm gonna show with this particular tip, so again, with the star, the star tips have a lot you can do, okay? You can also do a rosette, which is a flower. And so with that, we're gonna get away from Mickey Mouse. You can see, where am I at? Ah, right here, okay. So with the rosette, you're gonna go in a circle. You're gonna start, spin, squeeze, stop. And that one kind of got a tail, yeah. Okay, so again, we're just gonna start in the middle, squeeze, go around in a circle, get back to about where we started and stop. Okay, do one more. Start in the middle, go around in a circle, get to about the end, stop. And if you get like this where you have the little tail poking up, you just come back here with your finger and baby dab it down, okay? All right, so that's a rosette, which you can do, and that is an intermediate, or I'm sorry, a beginner technique. Um, the next Flower I want to show you because that's a fun flower you can do and it's not too difficult, which is why it's in the beginner category. The next flower I'm going to show is a drop flower. That one is a little bit different tip. I'm going to use um, a 224. That's this tip right here. And you can see at the top, it's got a dot in the middle there. So it's a star with a center essentially. Nah, it's not real clear. Okay, but it's a 224 tip. Do the same thing, just put that right on top, dropped it. And one second, get this back on. Okay, and that's part of the reason why I love using couplers because I can sit here and swap out my tip all night long and I don't have to get rid of another bag, I don't have to do anything else. So with this one, we're gonna be a 90 degree angle, okay? Close to the top. You're just gonna start squeezing, spin, 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 stop squeezing, pull up. And you have a flower. Do one more. Again, you're gonna start, and I like to hold, I'm gonna back up a little bit. So when I start doing this flower, normally I would hold a bag like this. So I'm just kind of facing it away from myself. When I'm doing a drop flower, I'm actually gonna turn my hand towards me, okay? So I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise towards me so that when I spin, I can just go back to a natural flow. So again, I'm just gonna start, squeeze, spin, 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 stop squeezing, pull up, okay? So we got another one. I'm gonna do that one more time when I'm back far away. 
Start, I've got my hand turned across, start squeezing. Spin, 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 stop, pull up, okay? One of the nice things about flowers like this, your drop flower or your rosette, especially for a fair cake, you can do a bunch of these on wax paper, let them sit, let them dry, because you're using royal icing anyway, which will dry rock hard. It's gonna dry like those pieces you can get in the store that say like happy birthday and stuff. That's what these flowers will end up being. And you can pick out the best ones and put those on your cake. They're just gonna peel right off the board. All right. And so we've got some flowers, but I think our flowers need leaves. So let's learn how to do a leaf. So you'll see this, I'm gonna undo my tip again, the top of my coupler. Nope, that's going the wrong way. Okay, so just unsqueeze that. I'm making a mess, it happens every time I make cakes, so it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna grab this next tip. This one is a leaf tip. Looks kind of like a V, okay? You can see it's got the little V part at the top. This one is a 352. They've got different size leaf tips. They have different types of leaf tips. I like this one. This is gonna be your basic leaf, okay? So we're gonna put this on here. Nope, just kidding. Get Grabby to help me out here. Squeeze a little bit on there, twist that on. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down because I'm getting ready to lose icing on the top of my bag. Okay, so make sure that you always keep your bag twisted nice and tight at the top, right there. Otherwise you're gonna have icing come out all over the top of your bag and on the floor and on your hands and then you gotta clean up more than you need. All right, so for leaves, these I would wait and actually do them on the cake. So put your flowers on, you've got them set. With this, I'm gonna put the opening on the sides so it's straight up and down. You've got the top, you've got the metal pieces on the top and on the bottom with openings on the other side, okay? Keep it just like that. I'm gonna hold it at about a 45 degree angle. Squeeze a little bit, pull back and stop, okay? So it creates that leaf. Do it again. It's gonna squeeze, pull back a little bit and stop. Put one or more in the middle, cause why not? Squeeze and stop. With these, it's a leaf. So if you have a tail like that, that's what it should look like. So it's one of the, few techniques that you want to continue squeezing before you stop, okay? All right, last one and beginner that I wanna share is we're gonna switch over to a round tip. And this, you can use your round tip for writing, for dots, for balls. We are going to do some dots here in a second. Um, you can also write with a star tip. And that's always fun too. And you don't necessarily have to do stars in your writing. You can just use a star tip to get a little bit of a design with it. Okay. So this one I have on here is a four. So it's kind of just a round tip. And with that, oops, that's my thing. So we're just going to, where'd it go? There we go. All right. So just start, squeeze, stop. Start, squeeze, stop. You can count in your head like one, two, stop. One, two, stop. I'm a little shaky sometimes. All right, and so these, again, you can come back here and kind of like dab those little peaks back down, okay? Um, so you can do dots like that. You can also do a border that you hold your bag at more of a 45 degree angle, okay? And you're gonna almost do it on the side. So you've got a, doll, a ball border. So you're gonna squeeze and stop. It's kind of like the shell, squeeze, stop. Squeeze, stop. Squeeze, stop. So now I have a ball border right there, okay? I will pause and see if Tony has any questions about those before I switch to intermediate. I do, there have been a couple of questions come in. Yeah. Um, one of them is how much icing should be in the bag when you get started? Yeah, great question. So with this, you don't wanna overfill it. So I will hold this up here. And you can see on the bags, it actually has on this one, I happen to get the plastic bags from Wilton. They're 12 inch bags. Um, I'll figure out the camera tonight somehow. But you can see there's actually a max line. And so I've actually overfilled this. Um, yep. You can see there's like a little dotted line. I usually do one, maybe one and a half big scoops of icing into the bag before I start pushing it down. Um, if you're just starting, a little less is better because then you don't have a big bag of icing you're trying to put around a smaller hand, okay? 
Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest also, Stacy, mm -hmm. and, and we can see that bag and the dotted line on your screen really well. Uh, but yes, for beginners, especially with smaller hands, um, in this case, less is better. Yeah. Good uh, question. Another, another question is about um, icing recipes, and I think I can answer that. Uh, um, we have some icing recipes on the State 4-H um, cake decorating webpage. Uh, another good place to get recipes is from Wilton Kick Decorating, and that's where we suggest you um, get a lot of educational um, uh, resources at. They have lots and lots of videos uh, that are available uh, for, for instructional purposes. And, um, and a question came in about uh, consistency, and, and Stacy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, you know, for consistency, um, you, you should probably test it out on an area uh, because the icing, you know, you, you might have um, the same recipe used all the time, but the humidity uh, within the house and temperature within the house can certainly make a difference. So I would suggest um, having an area to test it out, let it sit for a little bit to kind of, kind of firm up, and then see whether you need to um, uh, adjust the ingredients any further. Stacy, what would you say on that? Yeah, I would say the same. Um, yeah, I use, this is Royal Icing, I just use the um, recipe from Wilton. It's just meringue powder, powdered sugar, and water. And super easy, dump it all in there, put it on. I use a stand mixer, otherwise your, your hand's going to get tired holding a hand mixer, which is fine, you can certainly do that. Um, but I use a stand mixer um, and just put that on there. And honestly, I walk away for a little bit because you can start to hear it like whip up a little bit. That's when you can start stopping it and seeing if you're if everything falls as soon as you stop it, you're not done. Keep mixing it. If you've overmixed it or you accidentally didn't add enough water, you can add more, but I highly recommend adding teeny tiny bits at a time. Like seriously, dad, get your fingers wet and splash it in there because you can quickly add too much water, at which point your consistency is really off. It's going to be way too thin and none of your, your um, decorations are going to hold up. They're all going to melt together. And Stacy, when is royal icing appropriate versus buttercream icing? Great question. So for royal icing, if you want to do some sort of decoration that's going to hold up and you're going to take it off the cake before you eat it, kind of like those decorations you can buy in the store, that would be a great time. Otherwise, fair cakes are perfect for royal with royal icing. They hold up. They dry rock hard. If little brother or little sister bumps it on the way into the fairgrounds, no one's going to know. Unlike buttercream that doesn't firm up like that it's going to stay soft. Um, and so, you, but with buttercream, if you're doing an actual cake, a real cake that you're gonna have for birthdays or whatnot, you will want to use a buttercream or some other whipped topping instead of a royal icing because the royal does dry so hard. Okay, and then um, another question is, uh, are there any colors that you do not recommend people use? Yeah, actually I do. Um, for cakes that are going to be anywhere near humidity, or if you are going to take them to the fair or anything like that, I do not recommend any kind of a liquid food coloring. Um, my favorite are these, it's the gel colors. They come in these little jars. Um, this is the concentrated gel. You now have a ton of, cause gels become super popular. Um, so there are also gel tubes that you can use. I recommend those because they hold their color better. I'm trying to get a better picture for you. Um, they hold the color better they tend not to run um, unless you've added way too much color and your icing was too thin. Um, so they don't run like a liquid color would. Great question. Okay, and so um, I think at this point, uh, th there are a few more questions. I'm gonna sort through them, but I think I'm gonna yeah. let you go ahead with the intermediate um, skills and I will come back to, uh, you know, keep putting questions in and I'll um, organize those and we'll come back to those in a little bit. Sounds good. All right, so for our first intermediate decoration, um, oh, and the leaf that we just looked at, by the way, that we did last, this leaf right here, that is a, both an intermediate and beginner technique, okay? Um, first technique we're gonna do is actually, let's do some brush embroidery, okay? You know what, I should have left Mickey up here. You know, let's do the flower. I'll put the camera down real quick. And oh, Stacey, sorry, what, you, mess. Okay. what are you doing at? What was that first flower called that you made? This first one right here. 
I don't know which one I'm pointing at. This one right here. That's actually a rosette. Okay. Um, the second one I did was a drop flower and that, or it's a drop swirl flower actually. And with the drop flowers, you really want to come through and do probably a center. So if I were doing this one for a birthday cake, I'm probably gonna come through with a yellow icing and drop a little tiny dot in the middle for a center. All right. So our first intermediate technique is going to be brush embroidery. So I am just going to draw, um, we're gonna do a heart. So you're just gonna start with the round tip. Any kind of round tip is fine. I'm not great at freestyle. Okay, there we go. So with this, I just have a heart. I just did a heart out with a four tip. You could do a bigger tip if you like. And I'm going to use a paintbrush. These are just basic paint brushes. You could get them like with your watercolor paints or whatnot. And then we're going to softly pull this out. So we're brushing it out. You see that okay? So you're just gonna start on the edge and kind of pull it in. Okay. So when you're done, you're gonna have what looks like something that you brushed all in here. Get that across. And you've got a really cool design. It takes some time, but it looks really, really cool. Okay, and you'll want to do that all the way around your design. And that is brush embroidery. And it just looks really awesome when you're done. Um, something else that you can also use with a paintbrush like this, one of the color options for, Tony can help me out here, I can't remember the levels. I want to say intermediate and maybe beginner is color striping, it might just be intermediate, but with a paintbrush, you can dip that into your coloring, so your gel coloring. Take one of your bags, and on the inside of your bag, you're just gonna draw lines up the edges of your bags, probably two, maybe three, and then you'll put maybe like a white icing. So this is great for um, different colors, but I think a popular one is anything patriotic. You could do a red, red drop of icing here, a blue drop of icing here, white, I or I'm sorry, color, I keep saying icing, red color here, blue color here, white in the center, and then it's gonna come out red, white, and blue when you pipe, it's really cool. But that is a technique you can do as well. All right, so the next one we're gonna do is, I have a different bag over here too, I'm gonna use that one as well. So I knew at some point I was gonna need two bags going. Yeah. Put this down and grab the, we're gonna grab a star tip again and do a rope border, which is an intermediate border. Okay, so the one I'm putting on now happens to be a 21. Okay, another bag going. All right, and when you look at this, I, this is the 21 we used earlier, and with royal icing, it does dry. So you'll want to keep an eye on that. It does dry out, I should probably have taken some paper towel, dampened it, and laid it over my bowl. Otherwise, my icing is going to dry out in the bowl here. Um, but because I used this tip earlier, the edge of that tip got kind of crusty. So to start, I'm not going to start using any of my dime. I'm going to squeeze that out a little bit and just get some fresh icing on the edge, okay? Just get rid of any crusty yuck that happened beyond it. For a rope border, okay, we're going to start down here. And you're just going to make some C's. So I'm going to go up and down. And so I've got like kind of a C right there. And then I'm gonna start in the little crook of it, come up, over, down, and then keep going. Start in the middle, up, over, down. There we go. And then up, over, down. Keeping again, it's all about consistency of your sizing. So if you need to count it out, that's fine. I still count some stuff in my head. It's been like Tony said, over 30 years. I still do some counting. Um, but make sure that you're consistent. You don't want a big circle and then a teeny tiny one. And you can see that everything is covered. I, you can't see any of the, except for that one, you can't see anything underneath any of these ropes that I've done, any of these little squirrels. So once you're done, it looks like a really cool rope border. Do a little bit more. So we're gonna start in the middle, come up, over, and I've got my own little C there, and just keep going, okay? Um, one thing when you get towards the end of any design, so I'm gonna pretend this is the beginning and the end. I'm gonna have this guy right here and I'm probably just gonna do a little, little one right there. And then toothpicks are your friends. Grab some toothpicks and you can use toothpicks, you can use your finger and just kind of help squish that down in there and end your design, okay? 
Same thing with shell borders. You can just kind of use a toothpick to gently nudge that in where it needed to go. Okay, so now we're gonna do basket weave. The next two techniques I've got are both intermediate and advanced. With basket weave, we need two different tips. So I'm gonna grab, switch this out. <clears throat> And there actually is a basket weave tip. We've got a couple different sizes. The one I'm going to use is a 47. It's kind of a medium size basket weave tip. Okay. And that is this guy right here. So on one side, you've got a bunch of jagged edges and the other side is completely flat. Okay. What we're gonna do for basket weave is start, however, with a round tip. So I'm gonna keep my four, we've been using the four all night, and you're gonna do the straight lines for it first, okay? So I'm going to, where'd it go? Right there. All right, so I'm just gonna come up and do some straight lines. Ah, that was a bad straight line, I'm gonna skip it. Start, that happens when you aren't squeezing consistently. So just start, and then you wanna keep these all even, kind of spaced out, and if you need to use a ruler, that is perfectly fine. Rulers are fine, toothpicks are fine. Try to keep this all spaced out. I'm gonna do about three lines, they're not quite perfect. That's okay, we're just practicing. That's why we practice. Okay, so with basket weave, we've got our basket weave tip. Put this in here. And I'm going to use, we're gonna do about a 45 degree angle on this, and I'm gonna keep the jagged edge up so I get that design. For this one, I'm going to start against that last spot. And we're just going to go all the way across and then stop on that next one. So I'm going over the one and stopping at the next one. And then we're going to start this one against the line and come over and stop. So I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and throw another line in there because it'll look better in our practice. Doo -doo. Okay. All right. So then we just keep going. You're going to come back down here. And you'll have this one, you'll start and stop. And then you'll have this guy that's in the middle of it, you'll start and stop, okay? And then just keep going all the way down and all, oh, no, I didn't even do that one all the way. And then you'll go all the way around your cake. And if you ever mess up like I just did, again, toothpicks are your friends. Use your toothpicks before it dries out too hard and you can scrape that back up get that off your cake, fix it, redo it. You can kind of see the basket weave right here. We've got some that look like they're going over, some that are under. And so you'll do that all the way around. And that is basket weave. And that can be done on a cake, it can be done on the top of a cake, it could be the side decoration, which looks really cool. Um, actually the coolest that I've seen like this using basket weave is when you do the basket weave on the side and you have a border of a rope. It looks really slick, really, really slick. Okay. So that is basket weave. And then the next one I'm going to do is a rose. With this one, we are going to want to do, and I think I dropped all of them earlier. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to switch out to a bigger circle, bigger round tip. I'm actually going to use a 10 tip, it's just a bigger round tip, and get that on one of these. Okay. And then my other tip I'm gonna use is a 104, it's a petal tip. And your petal tip, you can use to do a lot of stuff. We're gonna start with our um, rows. Okay, so this is a petal tip. You can see it's kind of, it's bigger on one end, it goes down to a point on the other side. That is a petal tip. Get that going. And you can use the petal tip for Roses, ruffles, um, different flowers. We'll do a couple others here in a little bit. I am going to grab, I'm tearing off a piece of wax paper <laughs> so we can use it for a flower. All right, so with this one, I'm gonna try to get the camera back up because I need both hands to do a rose. So, get this to sit. Hopefully it stays. Stay earlier. Okay, we're good. All right, so with this, I've got a nail flower, okay? It's just a, that's what it is. It's just flat on top, it has that. It does technically, it is a seven nail flower. That's just the size. 
Um, with the nail flowers, I'm not as concerned with the size as I am with the tips. With tips, the size truly matters. With the nail flower, you really just want it flat. Um, and most of them are about this size anyway. With this, and this is what I was doing earlier, I keep squeezing it down because I keep not holding it right. So squeeze your icing back down, get that around, twist it, seal it off. You can also, if you want to, use a rubber band at the top. Um, I don't, but if there's not a reason why, I just don't. Um, with this to start, I'm gonna make a mess, okay? So I've got, and it's intentional. We've got our nail flower. I'm gonna put a little dollop of icing right there in the middle, okay? And then I'm gonna grab my wax paper just to help seal that on there, okay? So now it's not gonna fall off if I flip it. All right, so to start with the rows, we need to start with the center. So you're gonna take your round tip. I've got my four tip on here. Actually, I'm sorry, the 10 tip on here. We're gonna start and make a big spot in the middle. Let's just drive it all up, okay? So we've got the center of our rose. It's just a big, essentially, blob of icing, but that's the center of your flower. Next, we're gonna take our 104 tip. Get my bag all twisted around so I don't make a mess. Okay, and with this, you're gonna to wanna to start with the big end down, okay? Can you guys see that? The big end of the tip is gonna face down. You're gonna keep your hands up. And again, I'm gonna start spinning my hand. So I start with it far away and then I can rotate my hand back. So it's more of a natural spot, okay? I'm gonna start over here, squeeze. And as I'm squeezing and turning my hand, I'm turning the, pet, the flower nail too, okay? So that's why I've got it between a couple, finger, ah, a couple fingers and my thumb so I can spin it. So I've got that one petal. I'm gonna do one more petal. Okay, so there's two and then I'm gonna do a third one and that is the center of my rose, okay? And then you just keep adding petals and you wanna offset them. So like I'm gonna start here and come across. So I'm covering up my edges from the last time. Just keep adding more levels. You're gonna start adding more petals. So like this one will probably have five. But you want to cover up where you just were. It's falling on me. And so then you've got more of a rose. We'll do one more, probably a level of petals. And you just keep covering up what you did before. You start on top of your last petal, cover up the line from prior, keep going. And that's my last one. That's a rose. This takes some time. This is one of the hardest things for me to learn when I was in 4-H. But it's really cool when you figure it out, okay? And then the reason we do it on a nail with a little bit of wax paper, or a little bit of icing on the wax paper, now that I'm done, I'm just gonna slide that right off, put it on the table to dry. So when it's done drying, I can then just pick it up and put it right on the cake wherever I want it. Um, and you can do that with buttercream as well because your buttercream does harden like the royal icing does for those. My girl, I made tore a bunch of these earlier, so let me grab them. Okay. All right, let's do one more because who doesn't like making roses? It's back in here. Okay, so same thing. We're gonna start with a round tip, and sometimes you have enough icing on there, but I think I just took too much off. So we're gonna add a little bit, tiny more icing just to keep it set. Okay, put the wax paper on, press that down a little bit. And we're gonna start with the middle. Okay, just make your center of your rows. You're squeezing and pulling up at the same time. Okay, and then you've got your petals. Again, we're gonna start with the big end down on here. You're gonna squeeze and turn your hand while you're turning your rose nail, your flower nail. Do three at the top, covering up your edges. So you got the beginning and then you just keep going. So add your next level, covering up. You're covering up all of your ends. You're offsetting your petals. Last level. And you'll have more petals, the more, the larger your roses, the more petal more petals per layer you're gonna have. Okay, and that's another rose. All right, so roses are done. It's exciting. And that is both an intermediate and an advanced technique.
So with that, we're going to switch over to our advanced. But in the meantime, are there any quick questions? Well, I'm honestly going to get some fresh wax paper because I'm running out of space. Yeah, Stacy, I've got lots and lots of questions here for you while you're while you're getting ready. So, should royal icing in a bowl um, be covered with a wet cloth? Yes, you should be covering that with something to keep the moisture in, so it doesn't harden and become cracked. Um, whether it be a paper towel that you've wetted down and then spread across your bowl, or if you get just a towel and cover it, it doesn't have to be covered tightly. Just something to cover up. Okay. And I've had several questions come in about um, whether you're supposed to use a real cake or a styrofoam dummy and also um, whether fondant is allowed and other things like that. So I'm going to recommend that everyone go to our 4-H cake decorating website and um, look at the 4-H exhibit requirements. Uh, for state fair, we and, and even for county fairs, we certainly recommend that you utilize a styrofoam dummy rather than a real cake. However, there are a few counties that do require a real cake. So check with your county, but um, for state purposes, we require um, the, the styrofoam dummy. And then as far as whether you're to use um, fondant or not, that will be listed in the skill sheet and be sure to check that out as part of the exhibit requirements. Um, Stacy, does the base of the cake need to be covered in royal icing? Yeah, yes, okay. So. This is, I happen to have one of the dummies that Tony was talking about, the styrofoam. I got it at Michael's, super easy. It actually be curbside pickup this weekend. Yes, your cake, the, the styrofoam needs to be covered in icing. You'll have a base cover coat of icing on here. You want to have enough so that you can't see the cake below, whether your cake be actual cake or in this case, styrofoam. I don't want to be able to tell that it's fake cake, okay? And so add an, a sizable amount. You can do what they call a crumb coat, where you put just a base icing on, make sure it's smooth. And then you can put more on to make sure you've got everything covered in a solid fit. The board, which you will put your cake on, and I've meant to pull one out, needs to be bigger than your board. So if you're always doing this cake as an eight inch cake, I would want to do a 11 to 12 inch board. Probably gonna do a 12 inch board. That way I have enough room for my thumb to hold my board. Your board needs to be covered. So I would use, um, I prefer freezer paper. It's white, it covers it really well, and that way I can then you just use tape, tape it up, and I'm done. But you do wanna have it neatly covered. Um, the tape underneath, so you can't see that or either. And it's where you're going to, um, and it's funny, a lot of our bakeries don't even do that unless it's for an event. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're covering it. So I don't know if anyone ever watches like Ace of Cakes or the Food Network Challenge or anything like that, and Duff always says, I can see your board. And he's talking about the cardboard there at the edge. He can see that it needs to be covered. Okay. So you want to cover your boards. Stacy, can reusable icing bags be used? Absolutely, they can. Um, I personally choose not to, but that's just my choice. But you can absolutely use reusable bags. And what happens if the tip um, doesn't fit the coupler? If the tip doesn't fit the coupler, you can, a couple things, you can just not do what we did at first with the coupler and the bag. You can put the tip right into the bag. Um, at that point, you also want to put it in the end, put it back a little, like move it back a little bit so you can see where the edge of it is. And then you always want to cut closer to the end of the bag, so the tip of the bag when that's in there, than the edge of your um, coupler or the edge of your tip. So if I were to use this tip, for instance, I'm probably cutting that bag right around the middle. That way I don't accidentally squeeze my tip out with all the icing and essentially ruin a bag. Okay. And then um, several people ask questions about uh, um, equipment and where to purchase it. And um, I, uh, you know, while, while we can't tell you where to go to, I would certainly recommend um, Wilton Cake Decorating. Um, Michael's also has uh, uh, lots of good stuff as well as, uh, you know, a lot of your local um, uh, crafting and uh, cake decorating shops as well. Um, Stacy, do you have other recommendations? Um, honestly, I get a lot of my stuff, either Michael's, Hobby Lobby, or Wilton.com. Yep. That's where 99% of my stuff comes. Walmart does have some stuff. Um, they're not, they're going to have your basics. If you're just a beginner, they're probably going to have everything you need. Um, if you're looking for more advanced, you're probably going to need to go to some sort of a Hobby Lobby, a Michael's, or other place. Okay. And what exactly is Royal Icing? Royal icing is an icing, but it just dries rock hard. It's like you can see some of these are already hard. Um, 
the rosette, for instance, we did earlier, I can pick it up. And, I just pull that off the paper. It has more of a of an egg white or meringue type. Um, yeah. Interest. Yeah. Right. And and so, how do you keep the uh, you know your hands are warm and the icing is in there at room temperature? How do you keep the icing from melting? If we're talking summer fair time, you really want to have fans on. Um, growing up, we didn't even have air conditioning, but we used every fan in the house in the kitchen at the time. If you start to get too hot, if your hands get too hot, if they're sweaty, stop. Walk away. You can do a lot of shaking, blowing them off. Uh, because if it does get too hot and your icing gets too hot, whether it be from your hand or the temperature around you, your icing will not hold the shape you are doing. And how do you prevent icing from bleeding? From bleeding? A couple yeah. things. So one, I, that's why I do recommend the gel colors. That way, it, the, just, there's something about it, the consistency of the gel that you're using in terms of the coloring, it holds where it is instead of bleeding like a liquid um, coloring would do. The other thing, do try to keep your cake cool because as it melts or as it gets too hot, it will start to melt and that's going to make your colors bleed as well because all the icing is running together. Um, that's a big one, keeping it cool, using gel coloring, and then making sure that your icing is the right consistency when you start. If your icing is too soft, it's like you've melted your icing and it's going to run on you anyway. Great. And uh, some people put in the chat box, Joanne is also uh, also commonly known as Joanne Fabrics. They also have some great um, resource, equipment and resources as well. And, and they are also a um, partner of National 4-H. So um, be sure to, to check them out. Um, and this is a really good question, Stacy. For someone who is um, a first time cake decorator and just mm -hmm. learning all this, can, can you utilize um, peanut butter to learn how to use an icing bag and tips? You know, that is a fantastic question. I've honestly never tried. Um, but I have done peanut butter icing before and that holds. So I think it's worth a shot. I've okay. never done it before though. Okay. I was obviously creamy, not crunchy, but yeah. And, and if you're mixing up your own icing, um, and it gets over mixed, is there a way to save it or do you just need to start over? Yeah. A little bit of, a little bit of water, just little dabs of water. Okay. And, um, what's the, what's the, um, best tip? for uh, beginners to use? To start, I would start with a 16 star. There is so much you can do with that tip. It's not too small and it's not too big. And that is the one we started with first tonight. It's that 16 right there. It's the star tip. That's where, that's where I think it's gotten hard on me. Um, okay. You can see the little star tip right there. And you talked about the crumb coat as you were showing the, the styrofoam base. How do you end up making that uh, base layer really, really smooth? Yeah, so with those, a couple of suggestions. Um, get your crumb coat on there, let it sit for a minute. Go ahead and add your final coat, if you will. Try to use something to help it out. I personally, and this is me, you don't have to do this. I didn't have these until I was an old adult. I like the big spatulas because I can sit here and with my cake, I use one spatula and it fits and I go all the way around. Um, I also like to use a turntable. You could put it up on a cup and just help get someone to help you turn it but try to hold your spatula at like a 45-ish degree angle and evenly, like honestly, don't even move your spatula, move the cake around it on you. Use a turntable or something. You can also use, um, once it's not fully dry, but it's definitely set for a second, um, you can wet some paper towel like a Viva, doesn't have a design, wring it out really, really well and use that, put that up against your cake. So you'll put the paper towel on your cake and then just kind of gently rub it. And then easily pull back your paper towel and you should have it pretty smooth. You can use, um, another thing I've done if I've accidentally let my cake sit too long and I've still got a couple bumps, use a metal spatula, metal knife, metal something, run it under really, really, really hot water, get this thing really hot, um, wipe it off, get it nice and dry, and then take that and just kind of hold it against the spot that's not quite right. And you're just kind of, kind of melt that one little section and kind of smooth it in. And that's going to get rid of some of those little bumps that may have gotten missed. Great. Can you make any designs without using tips? You can. Um, trying to think of some good ones off the top of my head. I would say a leaf you could do using a bag and just cut um, a triangle on the edge to make it look like a leaf tip. You could do the round tips. You could absolutely do put icing in a bag, cut off a little bit of the ends. 
depending on how much you cut off would be how big of your round tip you're making. Um, so you could definitely do that one and try to think off the top of my head others. You could probably create your own star tip, although I've never tried that one. I have done the round one before where I just put it in the bag and I pipe it on its own. Okay. And what tips do you have for putting icing in the bag without getting it all messy? You know, I don't use, um, oh, you know, just a tip tip, not a tip. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. For that, I just use a spatula. Um, you can kind of see this. I'm going to make a mess. And so I just grab a scoop of it and then I just drop it in. I'm going to grab another bag. That's going to show. Okay. Okay. So when I'm getting my bag ready, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to fold it under. And then I'm going to use, put my hand underneath of it. So I'm essentially holding the bag like this and I've got an opening for the icing. I'm going to take that spatula of icing that I've got. Okay. And I'm going to put that right on top of the bag, use my finger and stop it. The other thing you can do, especially if you're on your own or if you're just starting out and you don't have another set of hands, you could also take this and put it in a cup. Okay, so your bag is doing the same thing, but it's on a cup. And then you can kind of hold the cup like that, again, add it to it. It's just little spoonfuls about a little bit at a time. And someone is asking on a brush embroidery, how do you get all the way in the, into the middle? Um, that you, okay, so the more you are doing your brush embroidery, the larger your tip that you start with, so the bigger your round tip is, the more you can pull it in. I would not necessarily pull it all the way to the very, very middle. You just want to have a design on towards the edge. I don't think I would try to get um, your brush embroidery to like touch on all corners in the middle. Like if you're doing a circle, I wouldn't fill it in. All right. And this is, this is something you may want to um, wait until we're finished but to demonstrate, but someone wants to know, um, how do you put color in a bag? Color in a bag. Okay, so like the color striping. Yeah, we can do that. All right. You want to do that at the very end? Yeah, let's do that because I'm going to do some painting as well. So I'll try remind me and we get to that and I will do both. Okay. And then um, when you're making the, the different um, designs, how do you know when to decorate on wax paper and when to when to, to decorate directly onto the cake? Yeah, so wax paper is perfect for, pre for practice. You want to practice on wax paper, get really good, at least get some techniques in there, get used to making a star, the pressure, the consistency, how long you want to hold it, for instance. Um, I love practicing on wax paper. I exhibit at State Fair and I still practice on wax paper in the summers. Um, so I love wax paper for practice. and when you're actually starting on your cake, most of it's gonna be straight onto your cake. Um, the difference is being flowers, you could do off the cake and then add them afterwards. Um, if you have any like that, it would be off the cake. Most of it honestly is gonna be straight onto the cake. That's why toothpicks are your friend, you can pull stuff off if it's not quite right. Okay, and these two questions are gonna to go together. Um, what's the difference, you know, do you recommend using a metal or a plastic nail? And then once you get the rose made, um, can, can you make roses without using a nail, I guess, is the question. Yeah, so metal or plastic doesn't matter. All you're really trying to get with the nail is something flat and then honestly something to hold in the middle. I've done things where I didn't even have a nail on me and I taught a class and we actually did them on the top of a cup. Um, and so we did a, like we put the wax paper on top of the cup and then we just sat there and we just kind of spun the cup. It was a bigger hold but we spun the cup like we're spinning the middle of the nail. You're really just trying to get something flat that ideally you can turn in one hand while you're turning the petal around in the other hand. All right, and how far in advance do um, flowers need to be made to allow them to dry? Um, well, that rosette already dried, so it doesn't have to be, it depends on the size of the flower. If they're smaller flowers, like our rosettes and our drop flowers we did half an hour ago or so, those are already dry and they could come up. You could certainly let them sit longer for sure. Um, I will, I'm gonna move the camera. So on these, I'm stuck. <laughs> okay, so on our rosettes and our flowers, if you can see, you can't really see any shine coming back. That one has a little bit of a shine still, these do not. It's like this flower is ready to come up and you just peel it up. And you can tell it's still actually kind of wet underneath because it left some icing on the paper. So that could have sat longer, but it was ready to come up if you needed it to go. Our roses, you can see, are still very shiny. Those don't touch yet. They're still very damp. Um, so I would not want to try to move those yet. 
Okay. All right. And then the last question, and then we're going to move on to the um, advanced division uh, for you to for you to provide some skills. And and so this question is, um, you know, if you put a flower on the cake and you don't get it there in the right spot, how do you go ahead go about moving it around? If it was a flower that you picked off of like a wax paper, you did ahead of time, you put it on wax paper and you just put it on the cake, more than likely you can just gently pick it up and move it to where you wanted it to be. If you did a flower straight onto the cake and you don't like it, toothpick, come up underneath it, or even a spatula, kind of scrape that flower off where it was, lift it up and put it elsewhere, kind of like you would a shell or some other tip or technique. If you're trying to get it off, you messed up, which happens. Um, you'll just use like a like knife or a toothpick to get it off. And then if you got color underneath of it, you're going to want to either cover it with something else, or if you've still got a little bit of your base icing left, cover that up so you can get rid of the oops. Great. All right. Well, let's move on to the advanced um, skills that you, that you're going to demonstrate. And I'll also, as she's getting ready for that, I'll also let everybody know that it is, um, Five minutes till eight, uh, and and that's okay. We're going to go ahead and, and continue on. Um, and, but if if I'm not able to get your question answered, you're welcome to email me that question, and I will make sure that Stacy gets it, and and we'll get an answer back to you. But we'll do some more question and answer after Stacy's done with the advance, and I'm going to put my email address in the chat box um, so that you have it in case you need to email questions to me. So there we go, Stacy. All right, sounds good. Well, the first te advanced technique we're going to do is another flower. And this one also happens to be um, intermediate as well. We're going to do an apple blossom, which is one of our, um, I think it's a five petal flower. We're going to start the same way we did before, getting our nail to, oh, that one dried up. So I'm just going to knock that off. Okay, it's so just getting our nail ready. It's a little bit of icing. Squeeze that on here. And with the flower I'm getting ready to do, we are again going to use the 104 petal to but this, with the apple blossom, the same technique, the same way you're doing this could be used for so many flowers. It would be the start of a pansy, um, a petunia, like all sorts of flowers that have petals that look like this. So if you can master the one, you've got them all. I'm not, and your icing does dry on you. So like that one, just in the time that we sat there, my rose tip flattened up. Okay. So with this one, again, you're gonna start with the big part of your tip down. Oh, I lost it, sorry. The big part of your tip facing down, and we're gonna do a 45 degree angle flat, okay? We don't have a center like we did with the rose starting off. We're just gonna do this one to begin with, and you're gonna go up, down, and while you're doing that, you're spinning the rose, the nail flower just a tiny bit, just a little bit, okay? We're gonna do it again. Up, down, stop. And again, you want to, it's all about consistency. So keep it about the same size. Okay, and keep going. And we've got our last one is gonna go up, down, and then over just a little bit. Get off my thing, okay. So you can see right there, okay? And that is a apple blossom. Again, you can come in here, and I kind of messed that one up, but you can come in here and do, do little dots for the centers and whatnot. We're gonna do one more since I didn't do that really well. Okay, and I've already got enough icing on here. You can kind of see it's still there. We're just going to use that icing. I don't need any more to get that to stick. Okay, so same way. We're going to 45 degree angle, big side in, up, down, stop, up, down, stop, up, down, stop, up, down, stop, and then last one, up, down, stop, but that one kind of comes over. That's better. And again, you could come in here and fix that edge if you wanted to. But that is an apple blossom. All right. The next one we're gonna look at is part of what we had been looking at before where we were working on flowers. But as an advanced technique, we can do what they call a flower and vine combination. And so we are going to start with a small round tip, I'm going to use a three, so it's just a smaller round tip, okay? Get that on there. Okay, squeeze my icing down. All right, so we're just gonna start with a vine. All I'm gonna do is draw a random line. Um, so in this case, we're just gonna go up 
and around and it's breaking a couple spots and it doesn't matter because I'm gonna put a flower there. Okay, so then we need flowers and we are just going to do, with this case, it doesn't matter really what flower you wanna do. You could do the apple blossoms we just did. You could do half roses. Um, we're gonna do some rosettes because I'm gonna do it straight onto here. But if you wanted to, you could do your flowers off the page and then come back in or off the cake and then come back in and add them later. Do them on wax paper. We are just gonna do some rosettes. Let's move this so you guys can see it better. Okay, so I have my vine and I'm gonna do in that one spot, a rosette. So swirl, 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 stop. Swirl, 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 stop. I'll do one more over here because why not? Oh, you guys can't see that, sorry. Okay, and then you can come back in here and add leaves like we just did a little bit ago, where you just start adding leaves along the vine and you have a vine with flowers. And that is an advanced technique. Normally you would do that maybe on top on an edge or on the side of a cake. You could maybe have flowers coming down the cake with some vines and leaves. Um, going back to our petal tip. Some really cool stuff you can do with the petal tip um, are ruffles or any kind of a garland like that. You can also do a zigzag garland with a star tip, but I'm gonna stick with the ruffles for now. And we are going to pretend that this is on the side of my cake, okay? We've got everything on the side. Again, you're gonna start with the big end of the tip. There we go. Um, big end of the tip facing you or facing down. So if this is the cake, we're gonna pretend it's on the side and we're just gonna do some ruffles. We just go up and then down. And you're just gonna go back and forth. And it's a little bit of a zigzag, but it's a ruffle, okay? And you can do that along. If you're doing a garland, you're gonna to wanna to go in a direction of a garland. We're going up and then probably back up. Okay, and then you've got your garland and you just do that across the cake. Really cool way to get that even is use the edge of a cup and do a little bit of an indentation along the side of the cake so you have an even garland line across your cake. Okay, all right, we've got some really cool stuff. I just wanted to show, we're not gonna really get into, but I know it was asked earlier as well. Fondant and gum paste are, yes, advanced techniques, but you can certainly do them ahead of time or in other categories that doesn't necessarily count your five. You can do all sorts of stuff with these, which is a lot of fun. Fondant, you can cover your cake, you can do, um, designs, you can do other pieces, accent pieces. These are just a couple I did in gum paste. Um, this is the first day of your cake. Two years ago, I made a little pig and then I made a little chicken and that's just gum paste. That was two years ago, I still have them because they dry rock hard, okay? Um, when you're using gum paste, that's what happens. It does get hard really, really quick. So you wanna finish what you're doing and then be done with it, let it sit aside. These I came back and painted. Just like my pig, I painted pink because hello, I wanted a pink pig. Again, you're just using your paintbrush. Um, whenever you're painting, whether it be on fondant, you could paint straight to fondant, you could paint accent pieces like the pig. What you'll want to do with parent permission, parent needs to get it for you, but I mix a couple swirls of coloring with vodka. The reason we do that is the vodka will help um, thin it out and then you will be able to the color will actually come through as the color and not just a blob of really dark, okay? If I had done the pink right on here, it would be so really, it would be really dark right now and almost black. It would almost look like this because it's just the gel. So you wanna use that to thin it out and get it to where it is and the vodka is gonna evaporate and just leave the color, okay? But with parent permission only. Um, we talked about painting as well. So for color striping, which you can do. And with the fondant, I just use the pre-purchased fondant. I, yes, you could make it, absolutely. Um, but I just buy fondant, especially for fair cakes. No, it doesn't taste the best, but I'm not gonna taste my cake anyway. And I just use something like this where I buy a big jug and I can color it myself or you can get um, the different, the smaller bags that are specific colors. I usually, I, I love coupons. It's like this thing was 16 bucks, but I did not pay 16 bucks for it. I use coupons. I save up and get everything on a coupon if I can. Um, so that's one thing you can do. And I'm sorry, I, you guys can hear Tate. That's my dog. He's been really good. He's gonna get all sorts of treats because he hasn't barked at all, but he has his um, collar on. 
Okay, painting. Okay. So here we're gonna grab for color striping. Okay, so again, I've got my bag. I'm gonna get it ready as if I were to get ready to do all of my um, ice, if a little with icing. If I'm color striping, I'm gonna go ahead and get my coupler in here, or if I'm just using a tip, I'm gonna go ahead and add that, get it all set to where I'm ready to go with my bag. And then I'm gonna grab whatever color I want to use. So let's do, I have apparently a lot of purple. So we'll do purple. All right, so this is my purple. It's just the gel color. And what I'm gonna do is take any kind of paintbrush, okay? And you're just going to stick the paintbrush in the color, grab a glob of it, so I kind of like scoops it up. And then you're gonna take your decorating bag, get it nice and open. Several hands are helpful here. And then you're gonna take your paintbrush, go inside your bag, up against the edge, and you're just going to paint, hopefully just a single line, up your the edge of your bag. Make sure it stays open so you don't get it squished. And you might have to dip a couple times into your color. That's okay. If you wanna get your color up as far as you possibly can. And then you really wanna get it down all the way to your coupler so you don't start with a whole bunch of white or whatever base color you're getting ready to use. And so normally I would do a couple of sides. So if I'm only doing one color, I'm gonna do the purple on this side. And then on the opposite side, I'm gonna do purple line here as well. You can also do a couple different colors if you want, like I mentioned the red and the blue or whatever colors you wanna do. Then once you add your, you'll add your icing on like you normally would, squeeze it all down there. With this, you wanna be super careful as you're squeezing down because as you're coming down, you're gonna start coloring that icing in those lines. Ah, that's my arm. You're gonna start coloring the icing in those lines. So you wanna be super careful. And then you'll squeeze it up there, get it you know, like you normally would a bag and start to piping. And the, when you first start, pipe it somewhere else. Get it on a wax paper or something until you start to get those colors to come out. Otherwise it's just going to be your base color until it starts pulling that icing through. Um, and those are advanced techniques. And with that, I think we're down to just questions. Yep, and Stacy, it looks to me like uh, I've never done cake decorating, but it looks to me like that um, that technique you just used with the uh, um, color in the bag, it looks to me like you'd need to practice that several, several times to in order to get mastery on it. Is that correct? Possibly. You know, it's not as hard as it looks, honestly, because the hardest piece is just getting your bag colored. Um, so that's where extra hands are super helpful because you could get someone to sit here and hold the bag open for you and just hold it. So they're, I mean, all they're doing is holding the bag and then you got some, you can sit there and add your icing color and it takes a little bit of time to get your color added and striped up the side and then you just add your icing and from there you're using any technique you're used to. So it's not super hard, but it does take a little bit. So, but it's a lot of fun. Great. And so, um, you know, the, the neatest part about the cake decorating uh, project, in my opinion, is the creativity that comes out of this and um, being able to, to, to do all the practicing um, that it takes in order to, to master the skills. And then, you know, it's like, man, you start out with just a, a plastic frame and then you end up with this magnificent creation that you've made. So we do have some questions that have came in. Um, how, do you keep, how do you keep that cake dummy from moving on a turntable? Yeah, so if it's on a turntable, um, normally what you'll do, and I totally missed this part, when you first start, you want to get your cake board secure to your dummy. So use a little, like use a glob of icing, because again, royal icing is gonna dry rock hard. But even if I'm doing a, an actual cake cake, I'm still gonna put a little bit of icing there because it's gonna stop it from moving on the board itself. And then on the turntable, yeah, it might slide around on your turntable, but that's not awful. Just be careful it doesn't fall off. Great. And why does white royal icing sometimes turn yellow? Yeah, so with white royal icing, depending on what you use behind it, so it might have been, you know, your ingredient, everything's ingredients. So I know like with buttercream icing, if it turn, if it's more of a yellow, it's because we'd used maybe not a clear vanilla or we used, um, I know my recipe calls for Crisco and sometimes there's a, you could use a butter flavored Crisco, which has a yellow tint to it as well. With royal icing, if it's turning yellow, it's probably, honestly, it's gonna be out for a long, long time. Like I have cake pieces that 
didn't yellow for a really long time, it might be some sun piece in there, but for the most part, Royal shouldn't yellow if you're sticking to an, like a meringue powder, powdered sugar, water recipe. Okay, and um, what's the trick for getting that ultimate satiny smoothness finish? Yeah, that really is just following the recipe. And then if you need to get, um, like I said, if you need to add a little bit of water, just splash it with your fingers to get a little tiny bit more water in there. If it's too thin, keep mixing, um, but just beat it. Beat it until it's the right consistency. And you know, as you're starting out, it's okay to stop the mi mixer repeatedly and check it. Stab it with, you know, not stab it, but dip a spatula in straight down and pull it up. If it falls over, it's not done. If it's really hard to stick your spatula in, you've got it in too hard, splash it with water. And it just takes a little bit, it takes practice on that. Like everything we did tonight is practice. Great, and um, how do you know if, uh, what the tip number, I mean, you, you mentioned off several different numbers as you were using tips. Yeah. Where do you find that number at on the, on the tip? Yeah, so on your tips, it's going to be on the side. I'm trying to find one that looks, okay. Um, depending on the type of tip you're using, I've got a couple here, I'll hold them up. So depending on the brand that you get, um, Wilton's, they are just scratched in. I don't know if you can see that where, it's really hard to see. But it's just scratched into the side. Um, Hobby Lobby has the sunny side brand and that actually is on there in black. So it's a little easier to see when you are, and so those don't go away. I've washed these in dishwasher repeatedly. I think I've had some of these for 30 years and they're still, you can still tell what tip it is. Um, if you're buying it, usually it'll say right there on the packaging, what size tip in big bold letters. Okay, and um, this is a two part question. Um, you know, do you have to use a wooden base or cardboard base for cakes? And I would say, uh, you know, it, it depends on how heavy that cake is going to be at the, at the end. Uh, when you're finished, um, a lot of the cakes that come to State Fair simply have the pre-purchased cardboard um, cake base and, and it, they may use two or three different layers of cardboard um, to do so. But then how do you attach that cake um, to the, the cake board? Yeah, um, you're right on, Tony, all of those answers. And the way to attach it, the best way is with that glob of icing that I mentioned. Not a ton, but a healthy spatula full. Like if I were to do it, it'd probably be about that much. Just smear it on the cake board and then center your cake and press down. Let it sit for a little bit. Um, if you wanna just let it stay and then start icing it, that's fine. But just icing, that's all you need to attach it to your cake board. I have with, it's on a different, because it's fair, because it's, you know, not necessarily real because it is a styrofoam on cardboard. I mean, you use cardboard anyway. You can use duct tape. I've seen that happen before. I've seen other things, but honestly, icing is easy. You've already got it. Smear it on there, push it on. It dries rock hard and you can hold the cake board upside down and it's not going to fall off once it dries. And what and, suggestions do you have for making trees? Trees. You know what? I'm bummed. I was going to do a tree and I didn't realize I don't have any sugar, like sugar cones. Um, like ice cream cones, and then I have plastic mulch for those, but I think they're in storage right now because I haven't done trees on the cones for a while. But what you do, I will try, let me see. We're gonna do some pretending. Hang on one second. And while you're doing that, I might say that Pinterest is a great place to find ideas as well. Mm -hmm. It really is. Okay. Um, okay, so for trees, and I love trees. I actually did a ton of trees when I was in 4-H myself. I did a bunch of Christmas cakes for some reason or another. And with that, I'm going to use a leaf tip. So this is that leaf tip we used earlier. There we go. So, all right, we're gonna pretend that my football cup is a cone, so it would come up to a point. We're just gonna start at the bottom and do a whole bunch of leaves. And just go all the way around your, with leaves and go all that way. And then you're gonna start the next layer. And in the middle of where your leaves were, so you had one leaf and then the next, that's where you're gonna start the next leaf. You just do that all the way up until you're done. Sounds like a piece of cake. It no is. Funny, no funny. <laughs> um, get, do, is there a particular brand of fondant that you would suggest? And, and, and also is, um, what's the difference between fondant and edible clay? Great question. Edible clay is more akin to gum paste than it is fondant. Fondant is really intended to be malleable at first. It's much more malleable 
in the long run than gum paste is. Fondant's really designed for, you know, covering cakes, um, to have it like that whole base covering for your cake. That's really what fondant was initially designed for. And then we've taken it and used it for all sorts of design features as well. But fondant will stay soft and malleable much, much longer than gum paste will. That said, you don't want to leave fondant out or fondant or gum paste, either one of them out mm -hmm. in the open. You want to, as soon as you open that package, use what you need to use and then put the rest of it in a baggie, make sure there's no air, seal that up and put it to the side. Because if they start to get dried out, they will, they will become rock hard. They will completely dry out. But fondant will stay softer longer. Okay. And a couple of uh, technical questions here. Um, can you add leaves to vines and can there be um, leaf ends? Can, can, can leaf ends um, also be borders? I think is the way I understood the question. Yeah, so absolutely we can add leaves to vines. Honestly, I would. I just didn't tonight for some reason. But yeah, we could absolutely can add leaves to vines. And I think, I'm going to, I got the instruct rules over here. I want to say leaves are a border. Yeah, leaves can be a border. So you would just do um, one right after another leaf on its side, either up kind of like we did at the edge of what would be the tree, or you can just do them straight across for a border. And Stacy, someone wants to know if you have some fondant available to demonstrate how to make a flower using fondant. I do have fondant available. Where did I put it? Okay, so it depends on the flower. There is a ton of different ones you can use. Oh, it's still good. Yeah, it'll work. Okay. And one of the tricks I found, and I really like these, is using, I got this for my birthday a while ago, but it's a set of gum and paste and flour, or gum paste flowers. You can use this, even though it's a gum paste set, you can use this with fondant as well. Or you can just do it by hand. And get this ready. It was in a tight bag, but it still gets pretty hard. And so this is one of those reasons why fondant really isn't recommended until you're older. I know it's really cool. I know everyone wants to do it because that's where you see everybody doing. I mean, Duff did amazing stuff with that on the competition this weekend. You just want to sit here and squeeze it until it gets a little bit softer, a little bit harder. And it's kind of like Play-Doh. So it's a lot of fun. And as you're doing that, we've got a couple other questions about fondant. Uh, one is, when should the fondant finish be smooth and when should it be a matte finish? I don't know that I fully understand the question. Um, fondant should always be smooth. Shiny, I'm and, sorry. Well, that's okay. Um, but yeah, it should always be smooth. So if it's not smooth, there might be a problem. Either it got hard on you or we didn't get it quite smoothed out. We you know, it takes some time to get used to working with fondant and it can be a challenge. Um, so you may not have gotten it on the cake quite right. But I'm not, I don't quite understand the matte quite part of that question. Um, All right, so one of the things you can do, and normally you would cut this out. Let me see if I got it right here. You can probably find molds as well that you can use for these to get them started. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to get this put out. all sticking. Okay, so with the fondant, really came over. So for instance, this one, I'm going to use the daisy cutter. So I'm just going to put that on there. It's not quite all the way. And again, you can use this with gum paste or fondant. There you go. Pull it up, pull everything else away. You get a flower. And then the thing I like to use with these is grab um, either a finger and just kind of smush it out at the end to give it a little bit more definition. Or you can use, they've got all sorts of tools. I get in so much trouble with my budget when I go shopping for cake stuff because there's so many cool things out there. You don't necessarily need all the cool stuff out there. You can use other stuff at home, fingers included. But smush that out at the end.
you can roll it out. And then so you can either A, leave it just like that. I would come in here with a toothpick and clean up the end where it's kind of left some stuff. Or the thing I like to do is do two of these, although I didn't roll out enough quite yet. Rolling pins are better than your hands, but we're just gonna use my hand for right now. Okay, grab a second one. Same thing, I'm gonna come in here and squish the edges. Get this out of here. And then you can take one and put it right on top of the other, gently, because it's kind of sticks to the paper. Okay, so I've got that flower up. And then I'm going to put that on the other flower and I'm gonna offset. So my petals are in the, ah, it was, are offset from the other. Okay, so you can kind of see that. If you need to fix them, you can. Let's come in here and spread them out a little bit. And then I'm going to push down the middle to help it be one flower. And then you've got a double layer daisy. So that's kind of cool. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with fondant and ribbon roses are another one where you just do cut the petals and you start to put them, or I'm sorry, you just do essentially a long line and you wrap it around um, one another, you kind of roll it. All sorts of really cool stuff you can do. Fantastic. And and the final question that I'm going to ask for you ask you tonight, and again, if I did if I wasn't able to ask your question um, this evening, please email it to me at t c a r r e l l at purdue.edu, and I'll make sure that we get it to Stacy and get the answer back to you. But the final question is, how do you keep Italian meringue from curdling? You know, I have never made Italian meringue. I'm not sure. Um, but with that, if memory serves. It's got to be a certain temp, and so I would just watch your temperatures. Um, bigger answer, I would start, honestly, like Tony mentioned, Pinterest, Wilton.com probably has a couple of answers there. Um, Google can probably tell you as well, but I've not done Italian meringue. All I know right. with other meringues, it starts to curdle if you don't have it quite the right temperature or you haven't quite mixed it right. Something's off in the ingredient proportions. Okay, well, Stacy, thank you very much for taking time out of your um, schedule this evening to be with us. And um, you've shown lots and lots of, of great um, tips and tricks for our 4-H cake decorating. There, there were several questions that came in uh, regarding um, exhibit requirements and uh, the skills that are allowed and not allowed. And so again, I recommend everyone go to our 4-H cake decorating website page. Uh, on the Purdue Extension um, Indiana 4-H website and uh, look at that project page. It has the exhibit requirements. It also has the skill sheet. Uh, it also has um, links to the Wilton Kick Decorating site, which has a plethora of uh, instructional videos for you to, for you to watch and, and look at. And then also, um, you know, uh, feel free to contact your county extension educator to see if there's a local volunteer within your county that um, has a, a cake decorating experience that serves as a volunteer project leader. And so with that, um, again, I, I want to thank Stacy for uh, being part of this presentation this evening. Hopefully everyone has learned something. Enjoy um, your experience cake decorating this, this year, uh, but most importantly, I want you to have fun doing so. Uh, I want you to be creative and, and um, you know, it's amazing the number of um, cake shops that are out there where the entrepreneurs started out and got their career started by being in the 4-H cake decorating project. And so uh, again, have fun when you go to the county fair and um, present your cake to the judge. If it's a conference judging where you're gonna be talking to the judge, um, take a deep breath, relax, and just, um, you know, um, pretend like you're the one that, that, is, that owns that and, um, you know, you are the, you're the expert and just tell the judge exactly how you made it, what you learned from it, and um, be confident and proud of the exhibit that you have made. And so with that, um, this, record, this um, ex, uh, workshop is being recorded and I will post the link um, to our website uh, once that recording is available within a couple of days. So have a great evening, stay, stay safe everyone, and um, we'll look, for, look forward to seeing you sometime. Bye. Thanks, Tony.